Lighters. I fell under the spell of the uh, flashy YouTube videos about um, the Douglas Japanese made field lighters, both the L and the S. I have them both. This is the L, uh, comes in a real nice box. I've already used it, but this is how it's packed. Very nice. Foam on the top and the bottom. This is a beautiful lighter, no doubt about it. Those other YouTube videos that are going to all the, the flint is in here, they ship with an extra flint. Um, and you can probably see on the top there, if I get it to focus, it's engraved with a field L up there. Oh, it's hard to get that, there we go. Okay, on the bottom, it's got more fancy engraving. This uh, is a very reliable lighter. I've had it about two weeks now. I'll turn down my light a little bit here. There it is. Um, great lighter. It's never failed the light, never even thought about failing to light. One thing that I do like about this lighter better than the S, oops, um, is this the, the uh, striker wheel is bigger and it's just easier, much easier to light than the S. Here is the S. Um, you'll notice it's a little taller. Um, this is also a beautiful lighter, no doubt about it. It's every bit as good as it looks on those uh, flashy YouTube um, videos. It does have a reserve tank in the bottom. I've got it cinched down a bit right now. There it is. Um, it's got cotton on the inside, just like a Zippo. Um, other people have already shown how the reserve tank... Let's Let's see, actually, I had it... At one point, I didn't have the gasket correct in it. Uh, the fluid leaked out, but uh, yeah, it's still in there. This little gasket is pretty delicate. You gotta be careful. I had it misaligned, and then that allowed the fluid to drain out into the main tank, but looks like everything is groovy now. So you've always got an extra flint and, you know, a couple days worth of uh, lighter fluid. Okay, the the downsides to the S as composed compared to the L are that it's just harder to use. So if I unscrew this, this is what keeps the waterproofness secure and dry. Once I unscrew that, then you'll notice that the striker wheel is much smaller. I don't know, maybe three sixteenths versus, versus one quarter inch. So, and, and that matters. Let me turn up the light a little more. Because the bigger your striker wheel, the faster it's gonna light, really. So on this one, well, first this one, super easy. Boom, ready to go. But this one, it actually takes a little bit of coordination. And I have actually, I suppose I could do it with one hand. Oh, there we go, one-handed. How about that? Um, but it, it pivots. You can see it's like a completely different motion. Uh, this one's got a much bigger uh, pivot, easier to use. This one, because of all the waterproofness that's built into it, has this much, uh, the pivot point is way down here as opposed to up at the top. The striker wheel is smaller. So, uh, but they're both going right now. Let's turn down the light. You can see they're both going. These don't burn that hot. Uh, when they first light up, they have a pretty big flame and it's great. Uh, but very quickly they start to burn down to this low, as you can see, it's, it's pretty small flame in the long term. But I mean, 
it doesn't take that long to light a cigar or a cigarette or to start a campfire going or some paper burning in a propane campfire or whatever you're trying to do. So they'll definitely both light your, light your fire. And as others have mentioned, they get quite hot. All right, that's still going. Um, let's see, I was one of the, so I mentioned the striker, the size height, the flint. This one has a reserve tank. Um, I mentioned that it's harder, just harder to use. I get, it gets, it works quite well when you start. It's just not quite as easy as this one. This is my preferred everyday lighter. Um, and this is almost twice as much as this one. You know, the S, obviously, with all this waterproofness built in, is almost twice, well, $60 more than the L. Uh, let's see. So, when I first got it, I um, soaked this S in water, just dipped it, dunked it, and the, I don't know, maybe I didn't have this screwed down tight enough to completely seal it, like that, or maybe this was a little loose, but water got inside this thing, so it didn't appear to be that waterproof. Um, and to, to, I thought it was like a dead lighter, because you can't figure out how to put a new wick in it, at least I can't. It's, you know, pretty tightly built. and <sighs> So, and it wasn't light for a whole day, and I'm like, geez, I spent all that money, and it won't even light. And I finally figured out what had happened, is that water had got the wick wet, and water had somehow leaked into here, so it was just not going to light until I put it under like a, a $50 heat gun and just heated it up to dry out the water. And then I had to pour lighter fluid, um, Zippo, into the end and then force it by blowing, put, putting my lips on the bottom of the slider and forcing lighter fluid till it dripped out, till I got all that water out of there thoroughly. And then it's been good ever since. But um, I'll show you right now, like if I uh, spray this one, it's all sealed up. I'll just spray it with water. There, it's all sprayed with water. And when I unscrew it, that keeps the striker wheel dry and it keeps the wick dry. And maybe it'll light, let's see. Let's turn off the overhead light. Nope, doesn't want to light. I never know if that's me. There, okay, not too bad. So it definitely withstands a spray from a you know, rain. Uh, and it looks like it's going to burn just fine. Let's see here. Here we go. Turn on, turn down the lights. You can see that it's burning. Okay, but now the real test. I'm going to dunk it in water. And I'll prob I suspect that it will just die for another day until I get around to putting a heat gun on it. All right, so I'll seal it up. It was just burning. We know it's happy. This is tight. This is tight. So let's take some water. Let's just dunk it in. Boom. I don't see any bubbles coming out of it. We'll see what happens. Just be aware that if you do this and it won't light, and you're like, oh my God, I spent all that money, it, your solution is just to dry it off, force lighter fluid through it, and it'll be fine. But let's see if I can get it to dry out. All right, so in theory, the striker wheel is dry, the wick is dry, and it should light, because it's supposed to be waterproof. Turn down the lights. All right. So I'm getting the strike. Ooh, that's a good test. So this time it did get it dunked and it got, um, and it lit back up. Is it gonna keep burning? No, it didn't keep burning. All right, let's try it again. Yeah, it sort of dies out. It's like there's some moisture getting into that wick. Yeah, 
it's lightened, but I can tell that like there's lighter fluid on the wick, but there's also water, so. And I don't think it got as wet this time. So anyway, there you go. It's not a La Miracle cure. And this one, if you don't get the uh, striker wheel uh, damp, it'll, it'll survive a light shower. Let's try it. Okay, I squirted it. I, I intentionally kept the striker wheel dry. And there you go, right? I mean, so this one will definitely hold up to, to a splash of water, like a rain shower, whatever. I'm not even gonna try ducking this in water because I know it's not waterproof. Okay, with all that being said, I think they're both good, good lighters. This one um, definitely is a little more resistant to a rain shower. I'm not gonna say it'll hold up to dunking. I'll try it one more time, maybe I'll give it another chance. Yeah, it's definitely. So they're not the miracle light, and it's so hard to strike, especially when it's wet. So, so another thought, rather than spending all this money on either of these, um, I'm gonna leave that open so it can dry out. Is good old Zippo. There's nothing wrong with a Zippo. You can get inside them, you can replace the flint, you can get all the cotton out, you can replace the um, the wick. I've done all that. I've had these Zippos for forever. Um, the thing about the Zippos is that it's gonna dry out, which is why people end up spending all this kind of money. So a solution to the whole drying out problem with a Zippo is get yourself one of these little bottles from Amazon. These are, I don't know, $6, $4, and it's filled with lighter fluid. You know, if you're really worried about having a lighter that's always going to run, you know, rubber band these together and keep it in your backpack or whatever. If you're out hiking and you have to have a reliable lighter, because the zip is always going to start. They're so simple. You can easily force any water that gets into it out by just pouring lighter fluid through it. It's pretty open. It's unsealed. All right, that's all I got to say. I'm... I'm going to keep these. You know, I'm not going to try to send them back to Amazon. I think I already scratched them somewhere anyway because I've had them for a couple of weeks. Um, I like them. Prefer this one. If you have to buy one, get this. I don't think the extra waterproofness of this one is that big a deal. Um, this one also, I think it burns hotter when you first start it. It's just a little bit bigger flame. Something about the way this one is built. Easier to start. Um... If you're worried about soaking it in water, put it in a baggie, right? And then even cheaper, get yourself a, what are these? These things are like 30 or 40 bucks and a $6 tank of uh, lighter fluid. Keep it with you all the time. That's all I got to say about these two lighters. I'm glad I have them, but uh, just cause this one especially, I think is so pretty. Uh, I love the gold color. One last thing is if you, if like me, like I go out, I, I rock climb in a backcountry ski and, and when we need a lighter out there, we really need a lighter. Like you could literally die if you're backcountry skiing and you gotta, I don't know, bring some fur boughs into a snow cave. You need a lighter that really works, absolutely. Or you gotta start a stove to boil snow to survive a night. You gotta have a lighter that works. Um, and additionally, we, we carry these hand warmers these are peacock hand warmers. They've been around forever, like 1910, World War I. And they, uh, I don't know if you can see, let's turn off this overhead light. There it is, see that glowing in there? This thing has been on for about an hour. Um, these, these peacock lighters burn for uh, 24 hours. So they will, you can go to bed with them. They'll, they can literally save a life. Um, pretty darn awesome. <sighs> um, you get them lit. The, the thing about these peacock lighters is if you fill them up too far and then you turn them like this, they'll literally, the ember that glows in this little platinum felt is gonna drown and it'll go out. And you'll think, oh my God, it's a bad lighter. No, it's not. It's just that you overfilled it. You gotta literally shake them like, <sighs> Whew, swing them upside down 
at the end of your arm to get all the excess fluid out. Once they're gone though, and they'll burn for 24 hours and they could save a life. Um, certainly keep me warm when I'm climbing in 40 degree temperatures or ice climbing or something. Um, and the way you light these things is you need a good lighter. I think these would work, but I'm a huge fan of this guy because it puts out a much bigger flame. Tall flame. You're never going to get these that from these lighters here. They just don't do a tall flame. It's They don't have enough wick exposed. And then with these peacocks, um, hand warmers, you just heat them up till they get hot. You turn them over, you heat them up again. And these things are awesome. I've had these peacock lighters for 15 years now. Never let me down. You can replace the wicks. Um, you can get them on Amazon now. These are great. Anyway, good old Zippo. Um, that's all I got for you. I, I wanted to make this video because I learned a lot from other people who had made much more higher end videos online to help me make the decision to buy the things that I did buy, all this stuff.